Okay, hi. This will be a quick demonstration on how you would value a supernormal growth stock. And I'm going to do it using Excel. Now, we're going to assume that the current dividend is $2. Okay, so at period zero, we, we received a $2 dividend. In other words, right now we got a $2 dividend. So we're going to value the stock based on the future dividends that will occur a year from now, then two years from now, then three years from now. Okay, now, here's our, the information that's provided. And it appears over here, it's modeled on a timeline down here, but I've listed it here so that I can use the inputs in Excel to solve it. So the dividend is $2 today. We're expecting a period of super normal growth for the next three years of 30%. Then it will return to a normal growth of 16, excuse me, of 6%, and that will continue in perpetuity, which means we expect 6% growth forever. So the length of the supernormal growth is three years. Oh, and I see I have a typo. Okay, I fixed the typo there. Um, and the required rate of return on the stock, the R sub S that you see here is 13%. All right, so the first thing, well, let me explain. The way I would solve this is I would model the cash flows. Now, you've seen that they're modeled here. That's $2 times, with a 30% increase, so 2 times 1.3, and then we take that and increase it by 30%. Now, I've done that here. If you look in that cell, I'm taking the value of C12 times 1.3. You can also see it up there. So $2 times 1.3 gets 260, and then I just copy that cell down for the next three years. And that's my cash flow. Now in year four, we return to a normal cash flow of 6%. So you see that in this cell, I just take C15 and I multiply it times 1.06. And that would be my expected dividend it, 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 in year four. All right, now what we want to do is model the correct cash flows. The way you model a perpetuity is you use the Gordon growth model. Now, I've put the Gordon growth model over here. The Gordon growth model is, or sometimes it's called the constant, constant growth model or the model for a constant dividend. When G is zero, it would be completely constant with no growth. But what, what the equation tells you is that you take the expected dividend one year from now, that's the numerator, and you divide it by the required rate of return on the stock, that's the 13% in our example, minus the constant growth rate. So our constant growth rate in perpetuity is that 6%. Now, I've modeled that right here. And we're modeling it in period 3 because that's the value at that point. At the point we receive that dividend, we're modeling the constant growth one year from then. Right? So we're modeling at the end of year three what the value would be of that 6% growth from periods four going forward. Now I'll hit the F2 and I'll show you how I calculated it. I took C13, that's the $4.66. That would be the expected dividend we would expect in year four. And I divide it by F9 which is the required rate of return of stock minus the growth rate, and that's with parentheses. So that gives me, if you will, the present value at the end of year three. Then I've got to combine all these cash flows. So all I'm doing is adding the cash flow and the perpetuity together. And you'll see in year three is the only time we have to consider the cash flow and the perpetuity together to come up with what the combined cash flow is. Once I have those in front of us, I can just use the net present value formula. All right, so let me call this one up and I'll show you what I've done. Actually, I'm going to redo this one for you. Okay, so let me calculate that net present value for you. So I'll type in equal NPV, hit the left parenthesis, call up my function arguments right here, and I start giving it the parameters it needs, or the functions, or the variables. So um, right there is our required rate of return. Then I'm going to go to the value one and I'm going to say give me the cash flow we expect which is from period one through three. 
I close that out. I get 5411, which matches our example. And that would be the net present value of the super, super normal growth stock using Excel to solve it for us.